From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Don Taylor down at Tri-State, Johnny. Hello, Don. Happy New Year. Belated, of course. Same to you, Johnny. Listen, would you like to come over to my office and meet a pretty girl? Sure. Is she interesting? Very. As a matter of fact, she just told me the most interesting thing I've ever heard. Oh, what's that? She just told me that she was dead. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Tri-State Insurance Underwriters International Building, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the McLean matter. Expense account item one, one buck. Cab fare to the international building in Don Taylor's office. He was sitting behind his desk when I walked in, talking to a tall, dark-haired girl in her late 20s who was standing casually looking out the window at the street below. She was pretty, she was quiet, and she was well-dressed. Hello, Johnny. Thanks for coming right over. I'd like to have you meet Mrs. McLean. How do you do? Hello. Sit down, Johnny. Make yourself comfortable. Uh, take my desk. Uh -huh. How are you going? I'm going to let Mrs. McLean talk to you alone. She has a most unusual story. Yeah, something about being dead, isn't that what you said? Yes, yes, something about being dead. Mrs. McLean, Mr. Dollar will be handling this matter for Tri-State. I wish you'd tell him exactly what you've just told me. Uh, ring the buzzer when you're through, Johnny. Oh, sure. sure. Um... <clears throat> Would you like to sit down? He thinks I'm crazy. That's what he thinks. Well, isn't it? <laughs> well, I doubt that. Well, uh, sit down. Let's talk it over. Of course he does. It's the first I've told it to anybody. It's fantastic. What did he say your name was? Johnny Dollar. Dollar. What do you do? I'm an insurance investigator. Oh. For him? For anybody who hires me. Here. Try one of these, Mrs. McLean. Oh, thank you. I suppose I'll be put in jail, don't you? Look, Mrs. McLean, why don't you try to tell me some of the facts about, uh, well, about whatever it is. The facts are, I'm legally dead, Mr. Dollar, and my husband collected on my insurance policy. Mm -hmm. When did all this happen? Two years ago in Los Angeles. How much money did your husband collect on your insurance policy? $10,000. Where is your husband? In Los Angeles. I suppose you tell me how it worked, Mrs. McLean. My husband's a doctor, Mr. Dollar. His name's Dave McLean. One night he had a patient come in, a girl. Oh, she was in pretty bad shape. She'd been drinking somewhere, and she just came in off the street, saw his shingle outside the office. I was there helping Dave as a receptionist. Oh. Dave took her into one of the examining rooms to see what the matter was. She had a heart attack. She died on the table. Oh, there was nothing he could do for her. Nothing anybody could do for her. Mm -hmm. She died on the table, and then what? Well, Dave came out and told me what had happened. We looked in her purse to find out who she was and where she lived. There wasn't anything but an address in Jersey City. No Los Angeles address? No. Her name was Teresa Corbett. She was from Jersey City, and that's all. Then what? Well, Dave called long distance to the place in Jersey City. It was an apartment. He talked to the manager there. I see. Go on. Well, uh, well, Dave didn't say anything about Teresa Corbett being dead. He, well, he didn't have a chance, really. The, the manager was very upset. He told Dave that Teresa's mother had died very suddenly two days before. He said he'd been trying to locate her there in Los Angeles. Oh, he was very frantic. Well, well, go on. It, it was just one of those crazy things. The, the apartment house manager was just about out of his mind. Teresa's mother had died in one of his apartments on his premises... He himself had, had assumed responsibility for the body. He didn't know what to do about a funeral or, or anything else. He told Dave that Teresa was all the old woman had in the world. Nobody else. And Teresa Corbett was dead in your office at the time? Yes. Well, Dave hung up. I, I didn't know what he was thinking at first. And, and then he said to me, we're in luck. Hmm. I asked him what he meant by that, and 
And he said that the girl who had died in our office didn't have anyone in the world and no one would know the difference. Then he told me we'd use her body. Just like that, huh? Yeah, just like that. He said it was the chance of a lifetime. Well, go on. Well, Dave called up Dr. Reed. He had an office across the hall from Dave. We waited a while, and, and then I hid when Dr. Reed came in. Dave told him that I had had a heart attack. He took him back in the examining room and showed him the body of Teresa Corbett and told Dr. Reed it was me. Oh, it was awful. What do you mean? Well, I mean, I, I hid there in the back office and listened to them talk. They tried oxygen on the girl and shots and everything else. But it was too late. Dave knew it was too late. But, well, Dr. Reed signed my death certificate. Two days later, they buried Teresa Corbett under my name. And then what did you do? Well, I, I took a hotel room that first night, and then I went down to Palm Springs. Dave said he'd meet oh, me there. Oh, wait a minute. Dr. Reed had the office across from your husband's? Yes. Well, didn't this Dr. Reed know you? Hadn't he seen you around? You said you were acting as a receptionist for your husband. I, I'd never met Dr. Reed. He, he was just new. Okay. So you went to Palm Springs? Yes. After the funeral, Dave came down and he said I'd have to disappear for a while to give him the time to collect the insurance money and straighten out some things. He collected the money? Yes. Yes, he did. All of it. Then what happened? I came to New York to live. Dave was going to close his practice in Los Angeles and come to New York and we'd be together again. He, he never met me in New York. Do you know why he never met you in New York? No. Did he write to you? Yes, for a while. For about three months after I left, he wrote me once or twice a week and, and said that he'd be in New York any day. And then he stopped writing. Do you have any of those letters? No. No, I'm sorry, I, I don't. Do you know why he stopped writing to you? No. I have no way of finding out. I, I couldn't call anyone in Los Angeles and ask them to look into it for me, could I? Tell me, uh, what is it you feel now, Mrs. McLean? What? Well, just what is it you want us to do? What? Well, I don't know. What do you do in, in a case like this? I've never had a case like this. Why did you come to us? Well, I, I've had this thing on my mind almost two years. It was wrong to begin with. It's wrong now. I suppose it's because this insurance company was wronged mostly. My, my husband and I cheated them out of $10,000. At least my husband did. What about this Dr. He, Reed? Well, he didn't have anything to do with it. I, I mean, he just signed the death certificate, but he didn't know the difference. You sure about that? Quite sure about that. I don't want to get anyone into trouble. I, I mean anyone. Including Dr. Reed. Yes. Well, I, I know how, how fantastic all of this must sound, but, but it's the truth. Do you think I'm crazy? You don't look crazy to me. What's the saying? What saying? Oh, something about how you can leave home, but eventually you have to come back to count the spoons. I guess that's what I'm doing now, telling you all this. Mm -hmm. It's good to tell it to someone after all this time. Did you get any of the insurance money, Mrs. McLean? Not a dime. Were you supposed to? I suppose so, yes. If Dave had met me... Would you say the whole thing was his idea? Yes. Yes, I would. I didn't know what he had in mind that night after he hung up the phone. You've been living in New York for the last couple of years since it happened, is that right? Yes. 2257 Street. Apartment 23. Well, what have you been doing? How do you live? I've been working. I took a job in a medical lab. Under your own name? No. I used the name of Patricia Kennedy. Is there any way you can prove you're actually Doris McLean? I could in Los Angeles. How? Well, people there know me. Friends I've had all my life. Were you ever fingerprinted there? No, I... I don't think so. During the war, did you work in a defense plant, maybe? No. How about a California driver's license? I don't drive, no. Would you be willing to furnish me with a list of names of people who might be able to identify you? People in... in Los Angeles? Yeah, sure, anywhere. Well, yes. Yes, I would, if... If it's necessary. It's necessary. Don't you believe me? All of this has to be checked, Mrs. McLean. Now, what was the reason for trying to cheat the insurance company? Oh, Dave was badly in debt. He, oh, he needed so many things. That, well, it, 
It seemed a good way to, to get them without too much trouble. You mean burying a girl named Teresa Corbett under your name? Yes. A girl without any family anywhere, with a mother who died two days before. Yes. Very few people in this world are without somebody somewhere, Mrs. McLean. Teresa Corbett didn't have anybody, Mr. Dollar. I know that. Do you know any more about her than what the apartment house manager said on the telephone to your husband? No. Do you remember the name of the apartment house manager in Jersey City? No. The address? No. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me about all this? Well, I... I can't think of anything. No. Before I ask Mr. Taylor to come back in here, I want to ask you again, why did you come to the insurance company? What? Why did you come here to Hartford to the insurance company? You asked me that once, and I told you. The insurance company were the people that were wrong. Now look, obviously, I... you've been living and working in New York and getting along. No one knows anything about this. There was no need for anyone to know anything about it. No need for us to know about it. Now, you'll pardon me, but you don't seem like the type of person who wakes up one morning with a big pain in the conscience. Not at all. Now, you sat here and told me about your husband, how your husband thought of the idea, how your husband hung up the phone, how your husband called in a Dr. Reed to sign a death certificate, how, how your Dollar, husband I'm handled every detail, all of it. Not you, Mrs. McLean, your husband. He's the one you want us to get, isn't he? Yes. He, he didn't have to meet me in New York once he got his hands on that money. He didn't have to do anything about me. I was dead on paper, and I couldn't go back. I, I buy a Los Angeles newspaper now and then, and I saw a notice yesterday that he's going to get married again. I see. But I'm still his wife. He tricked me. You helped him to do it. Who is he going to marry there? I didn't recognize her How name. How old are you? I'll be 30 next June. I'm going to ask you something else, Mrs. McLean. Have you ever been in trouble before? No. Well, you're in trouble now if all this is true. Well, it is true. Now, Would I just told you... Would you be willing to sign that... a statement in front of witnesses containing all the information you've given me here today? Yes. Yes, I would. Okay. Yeah, Johnny? You can phone your legal department, Don. Mrs. McLean is willing to make a statement regarding this whole matter. All right. Mrs. All right. McLean, you can make your statement in front of Mr. Taylor and whatever witnesses he wants to use. I'll see you in about an hour or so, Don. Good. You're, you're all through with me? No, there's one more thing, Mrs. McLean. You realize that if what you've told me is true, both you and your husband will be criminally charged? Well, yes. Yes, I realize that. Oh, I... <gasps> Johnny, for heaven's sake, oh, you're my... trying to scare me. I just Johnny. wanted that part understood. I'll see you. Hey, Johnny, wait a minute. Don't worry. I'll be around. Plenty. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, some well-thought-out lies. Well, believe it or not, they come true. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by John Dawson, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.